Hey guys, Barbie Cuban here. Let me tell you what we're doing. So I've had uh, the hog now on a 48 hour brine. The next step is we need to bring it up to room temperature as, as much as we can. So what I did is I've already drained all of the brine, filled it up with water and um, got all the ice off of it. So the next step is we'll take it over here. We'll drain the water out of that and then we will start prepping the pig in order to get it in that cajachina. So stay tuned, you'll see the next step. So people ask me, why to brine? You know, what, what is the reason for brining? Well, if you look at it, so with, with a hog like this, what you wanna do is you're actually gonna tenderize it. So that's why we're using, you know, the apple juice, the citrus in it. Uh, it actually gets into the meat and it helps tenderize it for 48 hours. And if you, you know, one of the things that's kind of funny when I was thinking about brining, I, you know, if you look back at nature, what does an alligator do? Well, an alligator, when it catches its prey, it takes it into the bottom of the uh, river, or wherever it's at, and it lets it sit there for about a day or two before it comes back and eats it. So I'm thinking I learned about brining from the American alligator. So uh, next we're gonna show you how to go ahead and start prepping it. All right, so we've got our hog out. What I wanna start doing is, is uh, I'm, we're gonna start cracking the back here because I wanna lay him out flat so that we can actually put him on the uh, cajachina. All right, what you wanna do is you wanna get it down the center of the spine and it's pretty simple. That'll do it right there. Now we'll get, uh, we'll start seasoning them up and uh, putting them in the grates. So that's one of the things I love about the tailgate of the truck. You can, uh, you can actually go anywhere. You can take a Cajachina, you got your Chevrolet truck, you got your workstation right here. Everything gets prepped. You don't have to bring a table. It's all basically built in. You could be out in the middle of nowhere and do this. All right, I'm gonna grab my wire and start wiring uh, this little guy up. So next what we did is I'm putting them in these grates. One of the main reasons is it's easy to maneuver, right? So when it goes into the Cajachina, I'll be able to pick it up here and flip them over for the last 45 seconds of the cook and you'll actually see it live. So I, I'm using uh, some wire here uh, this is the same kind of wire that maybe you would hang like pictures with, something like that. Make sure whatever you use does not have plastic because it will melt in here. Now I've been caught in a pinch before where we didn't have any wire and we had a coat hanger and we actually cut it up and used a coat hanger. But the main thing I want to do here is, is tie this up to where we can start sandwiching our, our pig. So. You wanna make sure you get a couple layers in here too because what you don't wanna do is have this thing break on you. Just make sure when you're doing this process too that you don't want them out any more than about an hour. That, that'll get them to a point of, of room temperature because what you don't wanna do is put them in there when he's ice cold with all of the ice in it. But at the same time, you gotta be careful not to leave them out too long. So about an hour at this point, still extremely cold. We'll be ready to uh, put them inside the box here in a moment. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we've got them all prepped and ready to go. So we're gonna do the moho next. So you can actually buy our 90 mile to moho by the half gallons. This, this, this now is out on our site. So I'm gonna inject them and I'm gonna show you how to do that in a moment when I get them in the Cajachina. And then we have a new product here, Cuban Dust. It's an all purpose Cuban seasoning. We're going to dust the top of them uh, after we inject them and then we'll start the fire. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this prepped ready. So this is one of the things I was talking about, how easy he is to maneuver now. Now we're gonna get ready to inject him. All right, so I'm gonna start with the, with the back legs. 
the hind legs and we'll start injecting them. If we were in a NASCAR team, I'd have seven of these lined up and it would have been injected in about two minutes. This is adding all of that flavor. So as, this, as he's cooking, this moho stays inside of him and actually starts marinating him. So this is made, each batch is 25 pounds of actual fresh garlic. Uh, we have real sour orange, orange juice, lime juice, lemon juice, uh, grapefruit juice, and a lot of the secret spices that's in our rub that we talked about, our new uh, um, all-purpose seasoning, that's in the mojo too. Spanish olive oil. That is gonna go throughout this entire hog and it's actually going to be cooking inside of him as he's in this box. And it will make him absolutely tender, you'll see. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the Cuban dust. So this is an all-purpose Cuban seasoning that actually I've had for probably five years but have never shared it with you guys, but I am now. So we're gonna be calling it Cuban dust. It's gonna be on our website soon. It is everything that we use in the mojo, all 100% natural. There is no sugar added here and uh, no, uh, no crazy ingredients that you can't pronounce, right? It's got, it's got gar uh, actually granulated garlic in it, um, roasted garlic, uh, kosher salt, uh, all kinds of other spices in it. So what I'm gonna do is, you know, a lot of these have MSG, by the way. This has no MSG, nothing. So we're gonna start sprinkling it on top. We call it the dust because of this. This will start adding the flavor. We'll dust our pig here. I think we're gonna call him Polly. So one thing we didn't talk about, so this hog right here is 43 pounds. This box was actually made by a friend of mine. It is designed after the Cajachina, which means Chinese box. And that's actually the story with the Cajachina was, in Cuba, as they were making the railroads, a lot of the Chinese made the railroads there and they used a box similar to this to cook because this is an outdoor oven. You, you can do a whole hog in here, but you can actually do, if you want to, you know, 20 Boston butts, uh, 18 racks of ribs, 20 chickens. I'm not kidding you, you can line them up. This works as an outdoor oven for anything you can think of, any big party that you have. So don't think, oh, I don't wanna get one because it's only once a year for a pig. No, you can actually cook all kinds of things in this. Anything you can put in the oven, you can do here. You've got a truck, you got a box, you can go anywhere and have a feast. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, we went with this 42 pound pig, but we custom made this box. I've had actually a 100 pound hog in this box. And, um, you know, the smaller ones, I think are a little more tender. I like those. You got a smaller party. This will feed about 30 people or so with plenty of leftovers. I'm gonna start the fire. We're gonna put the top on it and start roasting this pig. All right, so we're gonna use what's called these tumbleweeds here to start the fire. Do not ever, under any circumstance, use charcoal fluid. It should be banned. Your food will smell and taste like fuel. You don't wanna do that. This is natural, coated in wax. We're gonna put a couple of those in here, a couple of those over here, and then we're gonna run one underneath. We're gonna put the charcoal on top and we're gonna start lighting these. Now, for this, I just use regular inexpensive briquettes. These will actually spread very well. We're gonna do two piles of them. We're gonna spread them. I'm gonna start off with about 14 pounds for this box right here initially. Every hour I'm gonna add about eight pounds of charcoal to it. I'm gonna spread it. And then when we get into our last three and a half hours to four hours, that's when we're gonna flip the pig. We'll put this to the side, we'll flip them. I'll add a little bit more, cook for about 45 seconds.
We'll go ahead and get these to a point where there's fire coming out of the top of them. Then we're gonna pour it in and I'm gonna add some more charcoal. The cook actually starts once this entire top is filled with charcoal. That's when you start your four hours. All right, it's the barbecue and farmer out here. I've got my rake. Well, actually what we're gonna do is we wanna spread these charcoal completely out on the top. You don't wanna leave a hot spot here. Once you spread it out, that's when the cook starts with this. So a uh, 45 pound hog will take about four hours. And what you wanna do is about every hour, you're gonna add charcoal, about eight to 10 pounds, you know, until you get to the third hour. And then we're gonna actually flip them over. So I use, just the regular kind of charcoal because I don't want the big, huge chunks. I'll do some of those when I'm, when I'm barbecuing, some of the natural charcoal when I'm barbecuing. But this is just, this breaks down easily. I wanna get it in there. Um, the, co the coals, you don't want a big chunk in an area causing like a really hot spot on the hog. So you want the smaller ones so that you can be able to spread them out. All right, so they really should call this the magic box, not the Cajachina, because it is magical. The fact that you can cook a whole hog in here in about four hours. So this particular one is 45 pounds. I can tell you that I've done an 85, 90 pound hog, and it only took about 45 minutes to an hour. A 110 pound hog actually took us about five and a half hours. These, the way to do it, you know, you can get on our, on our website and it'll show you, but on the average, it's four hours. And you wanna add charcoal, which is fuel, every hour until the last. So if you're, if you're getting a hog between 40, let's just say, and 55 pounds in four hours, you're gonna be able to have it done. So again, all that will be on our website. So you can follow these directions. I know you're not gonna remember them. And that way you know how much charcoal when to add it, when to rake it, and when to actually turn it. See how white it's turning? That's just pure heat. All of that is pure heat, and now you can spread it. I just evenly want to make sure that I'm spreading that fuel. If I see a bare spot, I'll put a little bit in there. There you go. All right, we're gonna go check on it now. I think it's time to, to flip it. We'll see in a second. We're gonna lift it up. A lot of heat's gonna come out of this, a lot of steam, just gotta back away. And then we're gonna kind of spin around and put this, these hot coals on the end. So, ready, Romeo? All right, go that way. All right, there we go. It's looking really good. All right, now we're going to, we're gonna lift up. Yeah, tell you what, a lot easier than it was with the 110 pound hog. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start scoring the skin. Let some of the juices out of that. And then we're gonna put a little, uh, a little bit of the dust on it. This is how easy it is, see this knife? See how easy that cut through there? Unbelievable. We're gonna go ahead and put some coals to it. And um, let's get this bad boy back on. Oh, the dust, thank you. Yes, I almost forgot. So. There we go. Uh, let's see, there. That side needs to go yeah, that side needs to go that way. So we'll trade places, ready? Mm -hmm. 
Check wind in about another 45. She should be ready. All right, let's go check on it now. We just let her run another hour to make sure that that top is cooked. So let's just see what kind of magic we got here. We're gonna do the same thing. Roll it over. All right. You know what we'll do? Let's give her a little, uh, a little moho bath before we uh, put it on there. So I'm gonna grab some moho. We're gonna go ahead and give it a little bath there before we bring it on its presentation table. Let's go. Ready to go? Yeah. Let's get them out. is. Huh. Wow. I mean, it's, um, this thing is absolutely awesome. I'm going to go ahead and start cutting these wires off so we can remove this top rack and we're going to dig into it here in a moment. Um, I'm going to get something and start pulling it. I mean, let it kind of like, I, I like to let it rest a little bit, not much, five, 10 minutes just to get that extra moho in there and, you know, um, let the juices continue to cook inside of it. But if you look at this, this guy is super juicy. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little test right now. Then we're gonna take this top rack off of them and, um, oh my gosh. Guys, check this out. Look at that. Look at that. Oh my God. It is unbelievable. I mean, you taste the, the moho, the seasonings. It's so tender from all the brining, all the hard work, you know, 48 hours bringing them here, cooking them in there is gonna be well worth it. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off now and then we're gonna start slicing them up and start plating them. Let the party begin. Starting to take slices off the back. See the moho in there? Off the leg. This is the leaner part. All right, hey look, I just started carving this out. Uh, we've got our guests over here, so I'm gonna start bringing them over the, the lechon, as they say in, uh, in Cuba. So, Let's head over. All right, it's good. 